today I am back with my assistant Neens, who demanded to be a part of this video by the way, just want to put that out there. Um, today we are going to be making some spooky snacks and I am really excited about this one because I saw this photo floating around out there. Uh, they were these skull pizza bites or something where they're like breading on the outside and you bite into it. It's like a pizza roll and there's pizza stuff on the inside, but it was in the shape of a skull. So when I saw it, I was like, I really, really, really want to try this. But I didn't have any skull molds or skull pan or whatever, but I did have this coffin pan that I got last year. Figured we could give these a try today and make some spooky coffin pizza bites. But I thought this could be a really fun little snack slash dinner situation. Just depends on if you're serving it as kind of like an appetizer or if you wanted to serve it as a dinner. But I thought it could be a fun way to get the whole family involved. You could do this with your kids or your significant other, or if you're hanging out by yourself on a Saturday night and you're wearing your dog in a sling. So we're gonna try this today. And also I thought it would be kind of cool to do, of course, the regular pizza bite thing that I was inspired by, but also put my own little spin on it and do a spinach artichoke version. So we'll have kind of like an Alfredo version and then a red sauce version. So you can play around with whatever you want, but I figure we try a couple different things, a couple different flavors in here. All right, so before we start making our spooky snacks, I'm gonna get myself a beverage per usual. We would not be in the spooky kitchen without a beverage. And actually I have my little wine glass today. This is the most appropriate wine glass for today's video. It's got Mr. Skeleton holding up a glass. So before I get into this, I'm gonna mention the sponsor for today's video because it has to do with the adult beverage we are drinking with tonight's snacks. So today's video is sponsored by Bright Cellars, which is a wine club meets wine subscription service. It is a whole wine extravaganza, which I'm so excited about because I love wine, but I also love trying new wines. All right, so how this works is you take an online quiz. The questions are very easy. They're not like all these super fancy, complex wine questions. You don't have to know all there is to know about wine. So after you take the quiz, Bright Cellars matches you with wines that are specific to whatever questions you answered on your quiz and whatever your personalized taste is. Then from there, you get your wines delivered to your door. It's like the best mail day ever. And right when you open the box, you get these wine education cards, which these are really cool. So each card represents each bottle of wine in your box. The one side of the card matches the label on the wine bottle. And then the other side of the card tells more about the wines. Once I got picked for me, I have a Chardonnay, a Sauvignon Blanc, I have a red blend in there, and a couple of Cabernets in there, and then a Petit Syrah. And the customer service is really great too, because if you don't love a bottle in your box, they will actually replace that bottle in your next box. All right, so what's even more exciting is Bright Cellars is giving you guys 50% off your first six bottle box. If you go to the link down in the description box, just click the link and take the quiz and get started, and yeah, 50% off, which is a killer deal. The wine I think we're gonna taste today is this Happy Medium, is what it's called. It's the Petite Syrah, which it is just the witchiest, most magical bottle. And we're gonna use our spooky glass and see how this is. Cheers, ghouls. Ooh, I like that. I mean, I'm no, what do they call it, Samanier? But this is delicious. Mmm. All right, so let's get started. First thing I did was preheat my oven to 375 degrees Fahrenheit. I don't know what that is in Celsius because Americans, but. And now we're gonna go ahead and make up the filling for our spinach artichoke pizza roll, I don't know, coffin, whatever it is. We're gonna start that whole process. So, all right, so for the spinach artichoke filling. Oh, first thing I need to do is cut up some artichokes. All right, so I bought some quartered artichokes in a can. They're just in a can, like, just like canned food can. And I went ahead and put them in a little container. So I'm gonna cut some of these up. And I hate measuring anything because it's just gonna depend on how many of these you're gonna make. Uh, the crust I use, it makes six coffins. And I'm doing half and half. 
I'm just gonna cut up a bunch of them, like I would say a half of a can. So I'm just cutting up these artichokes and I leave out any of the really hard leaves. I just go ahead and just like not, I just don't use them. Cause I don't like the, the hard, the leaves that are real. These ones are okay, I think. But some of the ones, the leaves get a little bit chewy. All right, that should be good. And then whatever you don't eat, you can just eat as an artichoke dip is how I'm putting it out there. All right, so in this inappropriately large container, I have some thawed out once frozen spinach. So I buy the blocks of frozen spinach, if you know what I'm saying, they're like blocks. Whatever kind of frozen spinach you wanna buy, I went ahead and put it in the fridge overnight so it thawed out, and then I'm gonna use it for this filling. So you can definitely use fresh spinach, but if you use fresh spinach, just make sure you wilt it on the stove with maybe a little olive oil or something. Uh, just to break it down because if you put raw spinach into your pizza bites and it wilts up in the oven it's going to leave a bunch of empty gaps in your pizza bites and you don't want that you want it to be full of ooey gooey amazingness and not a bunch of air holes so just make sure you cook down your spinach if you're doing fresh spinach but that's why I really like the frozen spinach because you could just squeeze the water out so what I'm going to do is I'm going to take some I, once again I am not measuring but I just put an equal amount spinach and artichokes. And what I'm doing here is I'm, let me show you this. I'm squeezing out, I don't know if I'm getting a good, I'm squeezing out the water. And you could definitely use a colander and just press it all out and that'd be 500 times easier, but you know, I have to make it way more difficult on myself because that's just how I am. So I'm just pressing out this water because you don't want a bunch of liquid inside of your pizza bite because then you don't want it to be a soggy mess. All right, so if I had to estimate, I would say maybe a half of a cup of each, half of a cup of artichoke hearts and half of a cup of spinach. All right, next we're gonna go in with the mayo and I'm gonna be using vegan mayo because if you're out there and you're not vegan, just use your regular mayo. It's really easy to swap but not all vegan mayos are created equally, so I'm gonna go ahead and just show you what I use. That way, if you're vegan, you know which brand to go with, and then if you're not, just use whatever mayo you prefer in this, and it will turn out great. All right, so the vegan mayo I'm using is just the original Veganaise in the blue, it's in the blue packaging. And I'm gonna take two whopping tablespoons, and I'm talking like whopping, like overfloweth, tablespoons we're gonna start there i want this to be creamy but actually this is gonna once again be preference i want mine to be creamy but i want it to be kind of chunky if that makes sense that kind of sounds disgusting actually but, but it's gonna be good i promise okay but for me i like it creamy but i don't want it too much like i don't like too much of the cream and not enough of the vegetable situation so so i guess you would call it the drier side is how i like mine but um, like heavy on the vegetables. So I'm just gonna stir this together for now until I get the desired consistency. So I'm gonna go in with the third tablespoon. Ooh, this is looking good. All right, so then I'm gonna put in some onion powder. I'm just once again gonna pour this all in. We're not measuring anything today. I learned it from my mama. Then we're gonna go in with some garlic powder and do the same thing. Just sprinkle it all in there. We want lots of flavor. You do not want this lacking. Then I'm gonna go in with some pepper. And you can of course add onions. Just do like with your, if you make fresh spinach and you cook it down and you saute it, you can put onions in there too and have fresh onions in there. If you don't wanna do the onion powder, this is just super fast and easy. So if you're wanting to do something quick and just you know put together a quick little snack or dinner or appetizer or whatever, this is just really easy in my opinion. Then we're gonna put in a bunch of mozzarella cheese. I'm once again using a vegan version. I'm using the Dea mozzarella shreds. Once again, if you are not vegan, do not fret. Just use regular mozzarella and it will be delicious. I'm just putting a lot. We want lots of cheese in this one. And if you want less cheese, add less cheese. If you want more cheese, put in all the cheese for the filling. You just wanna make sure it's like good and cheesy and creamy when you bite into it. And that's it. All right, so we are done with the spinach artichoke filling. So next, let's take a sip of our beverage. Ooh, that's good, okay. From there, what I'm gonna do 
is I'm going to start preparing all of the toppings that I want for my pizza, bites, coffins, whatever. So whatever you normally like on your pizza, I would go ahead and prepare. That way you can get kind of a buffet style going when you start assembling your, what are they? Skulls, coffins, whatever. I'm gonna cut up some mushrooms, just really thinly slice some mushrooms, which I totally forgot I was doing. So this is the worst knife ever, I feel like, for this, but don't at me about my knife. This worked really great for the artichokes. And you wanna make sure if you're using mushrooms to slice them very, very, very thin because it's kind of like the situation with the spinach. If they're too thick, then they're gonna shrink down and then you'll be left with some open spots. So I'm just going really thin. How are you guys doing? How is your day, evening, morning, whenever you're watching this? Are you having a good early spooky season? Tell me all about it. Anyways, we're just slicing some mushrooms. I'm going to put them in just a little Tupperware. So I'm just keeping it pretty simple. I'm doing mushrooms, black olives, and then I need my pizza sauce. But if you wanna do peppers, onions, pepperoni, anchovies, I don't know what you're gonna do, but just feel free to let your imagination run wild. So, all right, so I'm gonna set aside my toppings for now because we're gonna work on this crust. And the first thing I'm gonna do is I'm going to spray my pans with cooking spray, olive oil or butter, whatever you wanna use. Just get that coated so these, so your crust doesn't stick to the pan. All right, so once that's done, we gotta set that aside because we gotta work on our, we gotta roll out our dough. The crust I used was the cup for cup pizza crust mix. It's gluten free pizza crust mix. And I'll have it linked down in the description box. I got it off Amazon and it is not vegan. So if you're gluten free and vegan, this is not the one. The one you're gonna want if you want a vegan crust is the Bob's Red Mill gluten free pizza crust. It was sold out literally everywhere because apparently everyone's making gluten free vegan pizzas right now. And um, so I got this one instead, and it does have dairy in it, and it does have egg in it, but um, but it's okay, because I have to be gluten-free, otherwise I get very, very, you just don't wanna know what happens. It's, it's a nightmare. It's a literal mess. Okay, so anyways, I went ahead and made the crust, but let me just tell you, if you buy this crust, it's, it's really good. But let me, I'm gonna put the link down in the description box to the video that shows how to make this crust, like how to do it, because the directions on it, it's not the same as the video. And the video, it, it's the actual company made the video, is totally different than the directions, but way better consistency. So I'll put that link down in the description box for you if you're getting this crust. Um, but it is a really delicious gluten-free crust if you've been looking for one. I'll leave the recipe that, that I was inspired by down in the description anyway. That way you can see how they did the crust but pretty much they used the Pillsbury, I think it was, the, the crust in a can or whatever they used, and then they laid it out and just kind of cut pieces of it and then laid them in the pan, just kind of shimmied it in. So I'm essentially doing the same thing. So if you don't want to use Pillsbury or you don't want to use this gluten-free mix, but you like, you have your own mix that you like or you make it from scratch, it's, it's gonna be the same thing that I'm gonna be doing. It's just a different, obviously a different crust. So. I have here my crust. I'm gonna take it into, I don't know, I'm gonna break it into four equal sections, I think is what I'm gonna do. All right, and then I'm going to cover the bowl with a damp towel so it doesn't dry out. We're gonna move that aside. All right, so then I'm gonna take <laughs> this dough. I'm gonna take a silicone mat, just a silicone baking mat, and I'm gonna lay it down and then I'm going to take a rolling pin, that's here, and I'm going to roll out this dough. The silicone mat makes it so the dough won't stick. So you want a non-stick surface, especially if you are making a gluten-free dough. And the reason I said to watch the video if you get this dough is because if you t follow the directions on the back, it basically makes this dough the stickiest thing ever and completely unmanageable. This, though, I watched a video on YouTube from the company about it, and it's the perfect non-sticky consistency. 
but it is kind of hard to roll out. I'm not gonna lie. And I wanna roll it out pretty thin because I don't want it to be too much dough, just like one big old breadstick and no, and like no filling. It's kind of what I don't want. So I'm gonna try to roll this out thin and hope it doesn't just fall apart completely. This workout, okay. Let's see, how, where are we at? Oh, this is really thin. All right, we're gonna get out our pan and I'm going to take my, I'm gonna peel this crust off. Oh God, let's hope for the best. Ah! They said if it starts breaking up, just to press it together and it's really, it sticks together again. All right, let's try this again. They lied. Okay, so I'm just gonna roll this. We'll start in the center one. And then they said to just on the website that I looked at, said to shimmy this down into the pan. Shimmy, shimmy. Trying to shimmy, y'all. <laughs> okay, and then I'm just gonna press it into the pan a little bit. I don't know if this is allowed, but we're gonna try it. Because I want it to be the coffin shape because, I mean, if it's not, then what are we even doing here? All right, just pressing it in. Nails are making this a little difficult. I'm trying not to poke any holes because you want it to be, you don't want like the, you know, the red sauce to run out. We're gonna make this one spinach artichoke. So from there, we're just going to fill the innards with spinach artichoke stuff. Pack in a good amount. And then I'm gonna put some cheese on the top just to give it the extra ooey gooeyness. Let's put some cheese over the top. There we go. Then I'm going to fold in the remaining pieces. We're gonna fold it in and wrap it up like a little baby. There we go. And if there's too much, like this is totally unnecessary. This is so much extra skin. We're, we're just gonna, I'm gonna tear it off. We do not need that much. It would be the doughiest situation ever. I'm just gonna throw it back in the bowl. And then it's said to blend the situation together. But let me just tell you, this is this crust does not like to blend. We'll try to pinch. Let's pinch it. I mean, it's looking ugly. The ugliest damn thing I've ever seen. We just don't want it to explode. Just trying to blend it with this, but it's not helping. Maybe we'll put a cheese seal. Let's do that. We're just gonna put a little cheese seal. <laughs> I don't know if that's gonna work, but we're gonna try our very best. The so next one, because we don't wanna be here for 300 years, so I'm gonna roll this out just like I did the other one. All right, next one we're gonna do, we'll do the bat, because he's right here. And we're gonna shimmy it in. So then, I'm just gonna get it in there first. Oh no, 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 what's happening here? You know what, I just rip that? Patch it up, patch it up. If you get a hole, just press it around with your fingers and see if you can close it up. Just do the best you can, but you really want that coffin shape. So you gotta get it, or skull, or whatever you're using, you gotta press it in there. So this is gonna be the pizza one that's like classic marinara sauce, all that kind of stuff. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna put in some cheese, maybe a tablespoon, that's probably a little more than a tablespoon, then a tablespoon of sauce, then, wait, where's my topping? I'm doing black olives, and which is gonna gross some people out, but I do not care, and some mushrooms. Then I'm gonna do a little bit more marinara. And by the way, the marinara sauce I'm using is from 
Aldi. I just chose, I think it's like a tomato and basil. And then I'm gonna do a lot of cheese. I don't know how much. Another two tablespoons, a tablespoon. I don't know how much it is. Then we're gonna start folding in the sides, which maybe I'll do it this way. Let's try it this way this time. Fold in the sides first. And then you can kind of pinch, press it down and pinch it. Fold, oh wait, let's do it maybe this way. What if I pinch these guys together? No, it's not working out too well, but it'll work better than nothing. So then we got extra skin again. This is way too much. If you like it extra bready, you can keep that on there, but I'm not here for the bread, man. I'm undecided on what I'm doing with this extra stuff happening, but I know we're not gonna allow all of this. I'm sealing it by pinching it. We'll do a little cheese seal on this one <laughs> too. Okay, I'm gonna repeat it so, and I don't, I'm not gonna show it on camera because it'll just take so long. So I'm gonna do an, like another spinach artichoke and another regular pizza one. All right, so the last thing I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take a couple of tablespoons of Earth Balance butter. This is vegan butter. You can use regular butter, you can use olive oil, you can even use an egg wash if that strikes your fancy. Um, I'm gonna microwave really quick. Until it melts, basically. All right, so then I'm gonna take some garlic powder. I'm gonna sprinkle it into the butter and make it some garlic butter. Then I'm gonna take my little brush, stir it around, mix it all together. Let the rest of that butter melt. Then I'm just going to brush it over the top of my coffins. That way it'll brown up real nicely. Hopefully it'll help seal it. But we also have that cheese on there that will help. I should have put the cheese on last. All right, so I'm gonna cook these at 375 degrees Fahrenheit for about, I would say a solid 30 minutes for this, but it's gonna depend on your crust and everything like that, because this is a gluten-free crust, so I don't know if that makes a difference, but, so I would say between 20 to 30 minutes, just keep an eye on it. As soon as it starts turning golden brown, then you can go ahead and take them out. So I'm gonna put them in, it's about a solid 30 minutes for these that I've experienced, so I'm gonna do it. All right, so now we wait. Right, we're gonna check on these. They're looking pretty brown. I think they're ready. All right, so I'm gonna pull these out. They look ready. Let's get my gloves on. All right, and it was about 28 minutes probably they were in there. I'm gonna let them cool down for a second. And in the meantime, I'm gonna start preparing my spooky plate situation. I'm gonna plate these on a cute little coffin plate I got from Pier 1 last year. All right, so how I like to serve these is I like to serve them with just the leftover marinara that we had that we used inside of the, what do you call them? The rolls or whatever they are, calzones basically. Just the leftover red sauce basically. I'm gonna pour it in this skull. I don't, this skull is pretty big, so I don't know if it's even gonna show. This is a lot of red sauce, but just for the look, I'll end up saving this, don't worry. No, no, nothing's going to waste. I like to dip the pockets or whatever into sauce because I like the extra sauce. My husband likes ranch, so if you like ranch, go with ranch, or you can have a little just different smorgasbord of sauces. Put that in the skull. Then we're gonna come over here and we're gonna try to dippy these out. All right, so let's try to get Let's see how he looks. One, two, ten. Perfect! Oh my gosh, it looks so good! I'm so proud of myself. The bottom part, let me just say, looks a little bit messy, but the top looks so good. All right, here's the next one. Oh my, that one looks good too. Little bit, I shouldn't have pressed that down. I knew it when I did it, because you can't see the skull as well, but still really cute. And flip, oh, you can't see this one as well either. Maybe I overcooked this one. But still really cute. You can still see it a little bit, the spider. It just, I pressed it down, I shouldn't have pressed it. 
Um, I should have just pressed the edges and that's it. But yeah, you just gotta shimmy it in and not press it down too much. Otherwise that's what you get. That one's a little brown. And then finally, these RIP ones are the best. In my opinion, they're the best. And now I'm gonna take a picture of them and then we're gonna try them. All right, so I already cut these in half because I wanted to get some shots for the intro, but I have to show you what they look like on the inside. So here is the marinara one, and we're gonna taste them here in a second. This one looks a little bit more doughy than I was wanting. I should have thinned it out a little bit more, but look at this one with the spinach artichoke in there. So much in there because I was able to roll it much thinner so I could stuff more stuff in there. So I'm gonna dip this in the marinara. Look at all of that spinach artichokeness in there. Okay, let's take a bite. Oh man. Oh, that's so good, dipped into the red sauce. Mmm. Mmm. Another winner. Another winner. I'm gonna take off all my lipstick, that's all right. All right, I literally could just sit here and eat that whole thing, which we will. So next up, we have the good old pizza, pizza coffin. Just traditional pizza style. Let's try this. Oh man. Oh, I don't know. Mm. I don't know. I don't know. I might have to go with the original, the amount of cheese I put in this. And I, and I kind of lied. I said the thinner bread was gonna be better, but I like the thicker bread, or whatever it is, pizza crust. Oh man. You guys gotta make these. Tag or hashtag Jade the Libra over on Instagram if you make these, cause they are so good. Also, I found that coffin pan at Target. Uh, it's not out yet because they don't have their stuff out yet, but hopefully they bring those back. Oh, let's have a drink of wine with it and taste taste the full taste, the full experience. Oh yeah, oh that's good. There is nothing like marinara sauce with red wine, nothing in this whole world. Okay, I'm still wearing my dog sling, but she's over there. <laughs> If you do make these, let me know, and I'll have the recipes down in the description box for you and link anything I can, like pans, if I can find them. I don't know. I don't know what I was going to say. This is so good. All I want to do is eat. But I am so excited these turned out so well, and I cannot wait for you guys to try them. Anyways, hope you guys enjoyed this spooky snacks video. If you did, you can give it a thumbs up. Say hey, ghoul, hey, down in the comments, because you know I love talking to you. Also, let me know if you want to see some more spooky snacks videos or just spooky kitchen videos. Anyways, thank you so much for watching, and I will see you guys next time. You know what's good when you get a high kick in there. Mm.